Hi, this is a podcast uh, about obtaining a copy of the app beyond Docker image, starting it up, and then saving your work uh, when you're done. I have an outline of the podcast here on the screen. So this video assumes that you've already installed Docker and have it working properly. I have a separate podcast video that goes through the steps to do that. So first of all, I'd like to go over some advanced uh, VirtualBox settings. So let's open up VirtualBox. And it's important to note that VirtualBox uh, Docker has to be powered off in this case here. So if I go to settings, uh, if you want to make your Docker image run a little bit faster, uh, it's good to click on the system thing. Uh, and you can give Docker uh, a little bit more memory if you have more. I have 16 gigabytes, which is considered a lot for a computer. Um, and I'm giving Docker 8 gigabytes. If you have 8 gigabytes of RAM, you might want to consider giving Docker uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM. I think the default is for it to have exactly 2 gigabytes of RAM. And it's all you need to do is uh, use this slider here uh, to move it back and forth. Second, <coughs> my computer has the equivalent of 8 CPUs. Um, so by default, I think Docker only gets one CPU. I've decided to only give it two CPUs. Um, if you have eight CPUs like myself, this is an i7 Intel on the computer I'm using right now. Uh, you can give it like four CPUs or something like that. You can even give it more, but it, it puts it into the red here uh, because it, uh, you know, you could be slowing down your main computer because you're using too much Docker. But if Docker is the only thing you're using at the time, maybe you want it to slow down your main computer. I leave that choice up to you. Second, you can say how much Docker is allowed to use of your processor. I'm letting it use 100%, which is the default. If you want to always uh, save 10% or something like that for your games, you can do that as well. Acceleration, it's good to make sure that nice to have these both of these checks, so you need to pay attention to that. So additionally, the only other thing you need to have set up in VirtualBox is the um, is the network ports. I guess it's under the advanced tab here if it's closed. And then you just click on the port forwarding button here. Uh, and then you need to have HTTP set up, uh, blank for the host IP, host port. It only works with 8080 on a Mac, which is what I'm working on right now. Uh, and the guest IP blank and the guest port 80. If you are on Windows, I have gotten it to work with um, <coughs> just 80 here. Uh, later when I we enter an, um, local host into the web browser instead of adding the 8080 you don't even need to add that part if you have this set to 80. Uh, additionally we need to set up VNC uh, you don't need to have the two there uh, but 5901 is the host port 5901 is the guest port leave the guest IP and the host IP blank or it does not work properly. Click OK click OK and now it is fine. I'm just going to close Virtual Watch Manager because everything is kind of done in the background and we don't need to even have this program open. So I usually don't even open up VirtualBox on anything. So now next what we're going to do is we're going to launch Docker. So in my Mac it's the Docker and then I'm going to click on the Docker Quick Start Terminal app. We'll put that right here. It's starting up the virtual machine as we speak. <clears throat> On a Windows machine, uh, it'll typically show you the Boot to Docker logo immediately because, again, Windows does not have its own uh, terminal shell. On a Mac, we actually have Mac actually comes with a terminal shell built in, um, so it defaults to uh, start with that. Uh, it can take a few minutes for the virtual machine to start up. Um, it's almost finished here. All right, there. So now it's ready. But I am not actually in the boot to Docker part. Um, for those of you that understand that there's two virtual machines going on. Um, so what I'm going to do, if you are on a Mac, you need to type in Docker machine SSH default, and it will get you into the boot to Docker form here. Uh, why? Yeah, we'll just leave it here at the bottom. Uh, for now. Actually, why don't I zoom in on it a little bit here, so you can get a better view. So, right. No reason not to have a giant terminal. All right. <clears throat> so now you can see I have the boot to Docker logo. That means that both the Windows and the Mac people will be on the same uh, level. <clears throat> All right. So now we are ready to use Docker. It's probably a good idea to pull the Docker uh, CentOS image. It's not a required step, but it will actually do this if you don't uh, tell it to explicitly. 
just to kind of make sure things are working, it might be a good idea. Uh, so now it's going to have to pull down 200 megabytes, so it is a good idea to be on a fast uh, machine if you don't have it. So um, <coughs> it's pulled it down, everything is up to date, so that we are fine. Uh, next, we need to get a copy of the Appian image. And there are two uh, ways of going about this. Um, if you downloaded the app, uh, well, I actually, I might be placing updates, so it's, it might be a good idea to try and get the up-to-date version. If you have done this on um, already uh, from last class, then all you need to do is do the docker uh, pull command here. Um, but if you haven't and you need to start from scratch and you are on campus, uh, we can do the second second option. First of all, I want to make sure that we don't have the existing image. So I know some people had some problems with the loading of the first one. I know one person was missing images, another person uh, was getting a MySQL error. If you have any of these weird errors, I think it's just best to just download it again. So I'm going to download it again. VossLab 172.21.9.162.1. Dot v -A -P -T -Z dot. Uh, may ask me to continue. That's fine. I'm going to enter the exact password from class. <coughs> so <coughs> it says it's going to take one minute here. I forget the uh, they have for some reason in my office now I have only 10 base T internet, which means that I can only download a 10 meg per second, which is always frustrating. <coughs> um, I'm just jumping ahead here. So um, I guess this is a good time for me to talk about it. Today I will not be going through all the different Appian steps. I'm going to leave that podcast for a future uh, date. I will only be going through the installation of the Docker image, for example. So <coughs> Oh man, one minute is a long time to talk. But anyway, I wish we could. I had some elevator music queued up for everybody to uh, listen to as we wait for this download to happen. Play the Jeopardy theme song or something. Alright, 10 seconds. Six. And if this gets interrupted because we were having the problems, I would just recommend going. So now I'm going to docker load input VAP to the C. And this can take a while again, um, depending on the speed of your computer. It's got to read this very large file. It's 900 meg. If you unzip it, it's a zipped file. Hence the Z at the end of the name of it. Um, it is actually 1.9 gigabytes or uh, 1900 megabytes so it's a it's a fairly large file to read and manipulate so you just have to kind of be patient uh, at this step <coughs> excuse me well it might be a good time to talk about getting a second window you can open up as many of these docker quick start terminals as you want oops I'm gonna move it to a move tab to a new window very good so so if I wanted to have two of these, again on a Mac, okay, so I guess our image is completely loaded. Additionally, um, you can do the docker pull Voss lab slash Appian. And what it'll do is it'll just download it from the internet. It says I already have it, so that was really quick. But again, uh, pulling from the internet, you're probably going to go at a speed of less than 10 megabyte per second on campus. Um, so that's the case. So I'm gonna, since this one is I'm on a Mac again, I'm going to do the Docker machine SSH default, so I get the again boot to Docker logo. I think that's. I mean, I have the whale before, but now I have the whale plus the Docker. Uh, <coughs> all right. So the next thing we want to do is check uh, the existence of our images. So Docker images. You can see here I have the VossLab Appian and I have the latest version. Uh, the image ID uh, can change, so it's not something to be too concerned about. Uh, but I guess this one is actually the same. So EB. Um, if this is correct and everything is as such, we can actually run uh, the image. So I'm going to do docker run. Uh, D means run it in the background. P means port forward the 
80 port, which we'll use for the internet, um, so which for Firefox or the other web browser. 5901 is what we use for VNC, which I'm not going to actually be using today. You'll see I found a, a more uh, pleasant method of interacting with Docker. So um, we could probably even do away with the 5901, but I like to kind of keep it around just in case I need it. All right, so now I'm going to run. Uh, and you can see it outputs a string here. It's hexadecimal, meaning it contains 0 through 9, as well as A through F. There are no letters in the alphabet past the letter F, but it is a long string here. So uh, the long string of random numbers and letters. So anytime we run an image, so this is an image. This Appian thing is an image that I gave you. Anytime we run that image, it's called a container. It's this whole image container thing. Uh, it was confusing to me at first. So let's see if our image is running, i.e. we have a container running. Uh, and we do that by the command docker ps. So type docker ps, and you can see normally if there wasn't anything running, it would just show the headers and nothing below it. But actually I have a docker image here, uh, 9d, etc. In the example here, uh, it's called 5ab. The first string in this case is the first 12 characters of the previous long string we typed. So here I got the long string this one and I got the, it shows this. In this case, our long string was this one, and you can see that the first 12 letters here are the same. <coughs> All right, um, that's just kind of like a short name for it. It also came up, comes up with a randomly generated name here. It calls it Serene Saha. Uh, on this one, it called it Mad uh, McCarthy. So it's uh, randomly generated. Uh, I'm sure the people that wrote that part have fun with it. So our Docker is running and it's ready to be um, manipulated. I'm just going to kind of get these two windows about the same size here. All right, so we can tell they're different windows. <coughs> All right, so our Docker is running. We have three ways of interacting with our Docker container. Uh, we can use the web browser, we can use the terminal, which is a new one that I just found out about, and we can use VNC. All right. So first of all, let's talk about the web browser. Um, so what I'm going to do is I type in localhost, and I'm going to use 8080 uh, because that is what I set up in VirtualBox. If you just typed in 80 instead of 8080, you do not need to add the, the colon 8080 here. You could just have localhost. Uh, but I added the 8080, so now I have to do localhost colon 8080. So this gives us the default test page for the web um, server. But we want to actually type in slash AMI because we're interested in the Appian uh, web app here. I'm going to zoom in uh, because I have a very large monitor right now. <coughs> so the next thing is I found a really cool way of connecting to our Docker image using the docker exec command. So here is our Docker container. So I'm going to do docker exe. I'm going to do interactive. Uh, I'm going to give it the tag this number here, this queue of letters here, same ones as started off our image. So every time you run your image, you're going to get a different container. Um, this is the container we want to interact with. And I'm going to give it bash, which is a shell uh, to interact with. So if I hit this, I now have direct access to our container. It's that same terminal that we had in the VNC viewer before, but now we don't need to open a separate VNC program. I was really happy that I figured this out. If you want a second terminal, like I said, you can run the quick start uh, Docker app, blah, 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 It'll pop it up, uh, get to the whole boot to Docker screen, and then all you need to do is type in this exact same command in the other window, and now we have two terminals in which we can run our commands. When you're finished with the terminal, all you need to do is type it in an exit, and it goes back to the Docker prompt, where I can type Docker images. If I'm doing my exec command and I type Docker images, it's going to be I have no idea what you're talking about. <coughs> so of course, again, the last way to interact with the Docker container is VNC. Um, so I've told the Mac people to install chicken.app and the Windows people to install Tiger VNC. So I can connect it through port one uh, and I get my terminals here. But you can see the terminal here is exactly the same as the terminal in this window. So uh, let's just not even bother with VNC anymore. Bye bye chicken. Um, <coughs> all right. So let's just see how this works. So let's go to our images here. And no, I have not figured out why this Redux is failing to return anything. It's, uh, it's kind of baffling to me. I did find out if you click on the image, 
uh, it does not work, I guess, in this case. Um, so anyway, I'll try and track down that bug and, and access it. But you can still go to the processing page and do things like dog picker. It's running a little slow, I'm wondering what's going on. Sometimes you just gotta try again. All right, um, so I'm gonna enter in like, I don't know, 160 angstroms. Uh, I need to invert the image, remember? We should probably move this box so it's up at the top. Uh, this page is under construction right now. I'm, I'm my understanding by other people, so I don't wanna necessarily mess, mess with it. I copy the command, I now paste it into our window here, and now it is running dog picker. Now again, uh, I know some people are concerned like, oh my gosh, it's printing out so much stuff. You can mostly ignore it. Uh, it does try to print out some interesting information here. So for example, the default threshold on dog picker is was set up to be 0.7, and what it does is it says, that gave us 14 particles. If I change the threshold to 0.65, it would give me 16 particles. If I change it to 0.75, it would give me nine particles. So it's up to you to decide whether or not that is enough uh, particles. I'm not sure what aspect, so it looks like this that bro part is broken with my, the my AMI image browser as well. Um, let's see, but if you do click on an image and click P, uh, oh, I was showing particles for me the other day, but oh, I think oh, I have to reload the page. So I'm just gonna hit reload. So now it shows that the dot picker is there. So if I go to the first image, it always picks from the bottom to the top, unless you tell it not to. Um, it'll actually show you the particles that it picked, even though you cannot see the image. <laughs> so, um, this is a problem, I'm still working on it, uh, but at least it's running for now. You can run the uh, estimate the CTF tools, run ACE2, just show command. <coughs> so, uh, you know, this can take a while, or it can be, or you know, or not, just depending on uh, how fast your computer is. I think it's going to uh, run a little bit slower uh, than Dog Picker. You know. When we process these uh, in real in real data sets, uh, we'll have like I don't know hundreds of images, and we're gonna set it up to run and then go to sleep. We don't actually sit here and watch it the whole time. You guys have eight images, which makes it more possible. So it's gonna be thirty five seconds an image, <coughs> which means it's going to take a long time. So, but what's nice about it is that. Even though Redux isn't working on some things, it is actually working on the ACE display, so I can see how well of a job I did on the uh, CTF aspect of things here. So it's only finished the one image, so if I click on any other image, it's going to show an error. It's now finishing up the second image, so as soon as it's done with that, uh, it's finished it. I can now do the second image and see how well that image turned out. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, stop this because it's just not uh, necessary. All right, so shutting down. Um, first of all, you need to do, if you want to exit from the terminal, you type in exit. I'm going to exit in this window as well. I don't even need this window, so I'm just going to exit my way out of it. <coughs> Can I keep exiting? There we go. Um, that's a lot of exits, only on a Mac. I think it windows it ends at this step. Uh, <coughs> all right, so uh, I'm now back to Docker. So I just exited from the container, and now I'm at the main Docker image, so I can type my Docker images and it shows my images. I can type Docker PS and it shows my containers. So first thing you want to do is you want to kill uh, your container, shown here. Uh, this one has a different name than the one in the, in the document there, so I'm going to kill that one. And so now I can do Docker PS, and it should be blank. But my work is not saved. I want to save all the changes I made. I want to save the CTF. If I try and load this page here, it's going to be gone now because I killed the container. Um, but I want to save it. Well, fortunately, it does. Uh, 
that image, the container is still there. If I do ps-l, it will now show the container again. It says it exited 20 seconds ago. And all you need to do is you need to commit it uh, in order to save the work. So now I'm going to do docker commit. I'm going to grab the container ID. And now I need to give it a name, October uh, 9th, which is today's date to work, I'll call it. Uh, thing. And it gives me a new string of numbers. There's no string of running numbers. It's actually a, it created a new image. So now I have a new image based upon Vossland Appian that is now called October 9 work and now is saved, right? So if you want to go back and work on work where you left off, instead of running the original Vosslab Appian container or image, you need to run your October 9th work image. So I do docker run, I'll do it in the background, for port 80, for port 80. If you're not going to use VNC, don't use the VNC port. Um, October 9 work. And now it's going to launch the container uh, that I just had. So docker sps. And if I go, notice it has a new name now, a new number name, which is the same one I loaded right here. Uh, now, if I go back to the web page, oh, it added a www at the front. Uh, thank you, Firefox. You had me able to have a heart attack there. Um, I can go and I can click on Ace. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to figure out what happened there. So maybe it didn't save what I had. <sighs> Sad. Anyway. Um, I'll have to double check to make sure <laughs> that that works. Anyway, in theory, it should have worked. Um, anyway, so docker ps docker kill. <clears throat> uh, if you wanted to get access to it again, and then I just killed it. On a Mac, um, you want to completely quit. I can exit uh, from docker. And now I'm to the Mac, and then I can actually turn off the uh, the virtual box uh, using this command here. But on a Windows, you cannot do that because once you exit, you are done. So you actually, on a Windows machine, if you are done and you want to make sure that Docker is not using any of your computers, you need to go in here and manually power off. I think that's just Command F or something. But if I do Docker machine stop. It, it will actually stop the uh, thing here. So now you can see it's powered off. So, all right, so that's it. Uh, that's how you open and close it. And clearly I need to look into this whole safe state business a little bit longer. Uh, but I hope this uh, guide made sense to you and um, ha have fun playing with your Appian container. And I'll try and figure out the, uh, the rest of the books. Right. So, where is my... Where